still working on the uh, office remodel and move structured wiring and uh, I had a little bit of a surprise um, I've been using OB100's two of them uh, their voice over IP adapters that work with Google Voice they allow me to have phone lines for free basically um, I paid about $30 for them about six years ago and uh, recently Google has made a rolling change to Google Voice I noticed of weeks ago and uh, things have been hectic so it's probably been longer than that but I noticed a couple of weeks ago that my phone lines were dead started uh, looking around sure enough the uh, Google changed the security settings in Google Voice for your ability to connect to it um, <clears throat> the OB100s are old enough that they're and they're past end of life OB is not supporting it they're not releasing new firmware they're just you're stuck with it um, they were cheap and I was wanting to upgrade to an OB 202 which is the latest model um, it has two phone line uh, you know the ability to connect to two different phone, uh, phone lines two different Google voice accounts uh, one of them I use for voice one of them I use for faxes and uh, so I ordered an OB202 on uh, B&H Photo Video. It just came in and uh, well, we're going to unbox it and set it up. Here's the box as it came from B&H. See, it's labeled Obi High Technologies Incorporated. www.obihigh.com is their website. And I'm not going to show you the other side because it's got my direct Obi number on it. And I don't want to share that with the world. Uh, warranty card and quick start guide. device itself for a frame of reference there is a standard Microsoft laser mouse kind of an old mouse but see the reference for uh, size it's got a power LED um, I'm not sure what that LED is for. I'm going to have to look it up. That's network, phone line one, phone line two. Huh. Phone line one, phone line two. There's your line coming from the LAN. They're going to the LAN. That's coming from the internet. There's your DC power. And USB, if you have an OB USB device, <coughs> which I do not have. And this is clearly marked, no emergency calls, sign up, www.obtalk.com. <laughs> the AC power adapter set up for the US, one Ethernet cable. So, hardware connection, it's pretty simple, and I'm going to be a little, you see I've got cables strewn everywhere here, this is uh, an office that's being moved, and 
to a space that's currently being remodeled, so nothing is neatly done right now. Comes with a little over six feet of junky cable. That is a Category 5 cable, it's not even 5E. So the cable they provide you is not even capable of gigabit, but then again, this device doesn't communicate at gigabit either. It's a 10100. So make sure your router or switch or whatever talks at 10100. <clears throat> you plug your network. There's your uplink. That goes to your router, switch, modem, what have you. That's what's facing the internet. Power just plugs in standard wall wart, and we're going to plug this into just a regular 110 volt AC power supply. Phone line one, in my case, just a standard cheap black desktop phone, goes into phone line one. clicks. Phone line 2, in my case, this black line goes to my fax. Clicks in. Now, let's install this up by the router. Well, the OB device is there. It's plugged in, it's powered on, and it is connected right now to nothing other than the phones and power. There's your Ethernet cable. You want to plug it in. I personally like having my VoIP adapters hung right off the router. I don't usually connect Ethernet cables that way, but here we are. Okay, now we connect via software. The next step in the process is to make a test call to the OBTalk network. Simply dial star star 9 222 and wait for a successful response. Once you get that successful response, simply hang up. As the manual does such a good job telling you how to configure the device for one line, we are only going to cover the extras involved in setting up that second line. The first step is to configure SP1 that here is not configured. Now, if you go up a little bit, just over that you see set up Google Voice. That's not what we want to do at first. What we want to do is click the gear icon, which is your settings icon. From this pop-up page, we click on set up Google Voice. This will take a few moments to build the next page. This configuration page will have a pop-up screen to accept the Google Voice Terms of Service. Go ahead and click Accept once the page fully builds. For this Google Voice account, we're going to deselect Phone 2 off of each of the lines for primary line for outgoing calls and incoming calls will ring on checkboxes. Then we rename the configuration name from Google Voice to something a little easier to remember, in our case Voice Line 1. We are not using 7 digit dialing, we use 10 digit dialing so we are not going to add the area code. We are not using this system for the service for a security alarm line so we're not going to check that checkbox. And lastly, before we proceed to the next step, we simply click Finish Setup. Now the Google Accounts selection screen will come up. You just select the particular account you want to use. In this case, it's the top one and just 
and click on it. This next screen is simply granting obitalk.com access to your Google account to view and send chat messages and configure your device to make and receive voice calls. This is exactly what we want to do, so we're going to click allow. And now on the confirmation screen, we just verify that it's using the correct email address for our Google account and we click confirm. Back to the setup screen where we hit finish setup again. In the main dashboard screen, you can see that the system is going to take some time, two to five minutes or so, to get connected and everything synced up. You're going to go through a couple of stages. What you're looking for is the status under SP1 to say connected. Let's go ahead and select the settings for SP2. We're going to configure Google Voice here, and we're going to go through a fairly similar setup like we had before. This time, we're going to deselect Phone 1 from primary line for outgoing calls and incoming calls will ring on. The configuration name will be changed from Google Voice to Fax Line 1. The remainder of the settings are going to be the same. No area code for the seven digit dialing, no checkbox for the using it as a alarm monitor, and just click finish setup. Proceed through the Google account selection like you did before, except selecting the secondary account for the secondary line. This way you have two separate numbers. Just like we did before, we're going to allow access to obitalk.com to our Google account. Verify the email address for the secondary account and click finish. Now you can click finish setup. Back at the main dashboard, you can see we have SP1 and SP2 configuring. Phone 1 is assigned to SP1, and Phone 2 is assigned to SP2, so they're not going to ring on those others. Phone 1 is the first port, Phone 2 is the second port. After a few minutes, you can see that both SP1 and SP2 are showing connected. You are now ready to start making calls with your OB device to other normal landline phones. Hope this helped. If you like my videos, remember to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Feel free to go back into the old catalog by clicking my channel and then clicking on the videos link. Lots of decent stuff back there you may be interested in. And, like I always say to you folks, be busy, be productive, be safe, but most of all, be blessed. I'll talk to you later. Thanks for watching.